Well, hey, this is Mick Angelo at the Mix Palace. I've been here over 30 years, and I'm just really proud to welcome uh, a guest I have here. He got his start here at the Mix Palace. Yes. Uh, 88 Keys, probably the most in-demand producer in the world at this time. 88, I'll just give it to you, man. Just uh, tell me, how, tell everybody how you got your start here. And uh, I want to say, less than a minute ago, I just walked through these doors and entered this room here and I'm flushed with a lot of emotions and memories, fond memories here. Um, I don't know, uh, sheesh, I, don't, I really don't know where to start. Oh, I guess how I'll old you? How old were you when you rang my doorbell? Yeah, I was, uh, I was 15 years old. Oh my God. Yeah, I walked, so just being a dumb, curious kid, uh, I, I passed by this building uh, a few times and I always saw like a wide body bends you know, or BMW and stuff like that. And, you know, there is some, I feel like, if memory serves me correctly, I, I was walking with a group of friends and I remember asking like, hey, what's going on in there? And no one really knew. And there was like the rumor, like, oh, this was like, uh, well, I'm trying to remember exactly what was said about this. You know, because there were so many high profile, like, foreign cars outside and stuff mm -hmm. like that so like i guess amongst us dumb kids we were like oh yeah no that's the mafia they that's the meeting the meeting place for, meeting grounds for the mafia and stuff like that so i remember one day i was like it can't be that so i just knocked on the door i was like hey what is this place and um i, I think it was uh dave trotty oh i think he good memory yeah 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 yeah, yeah. He, I, yeah I believe he he came to the door and he's looking at me like and you are um, yeah, so he welcomed me in. He told me that it was a uh, studio. And around that time, I was getting into uh, production, like, you know, self-taught, um, just from my growing record collection. So I started my record collection when I was 14 years old. And it, about a year later, I realized hip-hop was sampling from these old records that I was uh, collecting. But I still didn't know what sampling was. I just knew that there was a process that they were doing which would take old music and make it new. Um, so eventually I figured it out. Again, like the internet barely existed back then. So it wasn't like I could Google, like go into Google or, you know, YouTube, this stuff. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I started putting, putting my own ideas together. And then I met Paul. I, I, yeah, I believe I met Paul first, and then I met you. Uh, yeah, and you guys welcomed me in. Uh, you know, I, I was just very fascinated, and I was and I was just wondering, like, how can I do this? How can I, you know, be a part of this somehow? And, you know, start off as an intern. Uh, and, and, you know, and I was grateful for my intern experience because... My intern experience was I was actually learning something from you guys. Um, it wasn't just like, well, actually, I don't believe I ever fetched coffee. I, I did take out the trash. <laughs> I definitely took out the trash. Um, but I, uh, what was the engineer's name? Mm, Twosto, I remember his Oh, name. oh, yeah, Mike Twosto. Yeah, yeah, Mike I remember Twosto. him. Good memory. Yeah, I don't know where this is. All, my, my memory is usually trash, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So he was showing me the ropes, and I remember seeing this board right here, and I became overwhelmed from all of the buttons and stuff like that. And actually, now that I recall, that this was my first uh, professional studio experience. I had never entered a professional studio before this. Um, wow, this is a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of memories and emotions come. Um, yeah, so from there, you guys allowed me to become an intern. And uh, I remember Paul said one thing. He said, if you're going to learn anything from here, learn how to use that. And then he pointed to the NPC 3000, which you guys had. And it just looked super cool to me. I don't believe I've, I had ever seen one before. At the time, I was working with an S9, uh, a Kai S950, um, and then I upgraded or graduated to uh, the Insonic ASR10 keyboard, none of which I owned, 
a guy who I was working for, I used to clean records for him. Uh, he saw my developing ear, so he purchased the equipment and left it at his parents' house for me to use in uh, Malvern. Wow, so wow. I, yeah, so after school, I had to go home, do my homework here in West Hempstead, and then I'd walk over to Malvern just to, you know, just figure out how to use the equipment. So Paul told me that, like, make sure I use the, M you know, learn how to use the MPC 3000. Um, you know, I used to come here as often as possible. I, f I feel like I was here almost every day after school, like after I had to do my homework and stuff. And I had a notebook. I was taking notes on what everything did and aligning the Ah, lining the tape machines and the, you know the, the studios and all that man i'm sorry i just have no 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 i gotta say just in all honesty i always got the most incredible vibe from you <laughs> it was just a chill cool vibe you know yeah. we always i, I just I, I always had nothing but good things to say about you but i always kind of like we just said yeah to you because your vibe was so right seriously i'm gonna uh. be honest with you. you just your vibe was so obvious i'm so super sensitive you know yeah. and like your vibe and you were just like you were just on a train track like you were you were into what man. you were doing and yeah 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 absolutely man i appreciate that it said it said artist all over your aura by the way huh. you know yeah yeah it did. yeah I, I couldn't even imagine it back then so then you guys started to allow me to lock up you know um i was you know i had my own set of key well i was allowed to use the keys i was allowed mm -hmm. to lock up and uh, yeah, I, you know, I gained your trust fairly quickly because I went from being an intern to an actual assistant engineer. Um, I forgot the time frame, but it was pretty fast considering that I was 15 years old. Oh my God. I, you didn't tell us you were 15 though, right? I don't believe I, I don't did. I think you did. Yeah, I had no idea. All right, let's hold the record, hold the record. <laughs> Child labor laws. Now. Um, yeah, but, um. So from there, I remember one time I, you know, so I got, I got, again, you guys allowed me to lock up and stuff. And one, one evening I sat down to use the MPC 3000 for the first time, like touching it. I looked all over for the owner's manual, couldn't find it. So I just sat down with it and I didn't leave until four in the morning and I, and I had to walk home, uh, yeah, and the very first beat I ever made on that is the very first beat I sold. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I was supposed to get $900 for it. Um, I wound up getting $700, but to a kid, $700 is like $3,000 today. To totally. Yeah, I would, yeah. Um, and between the time that I sold that beat and where I was... Um, uh, from a creative standpoint, I had gotten way better, but the the group they just wanted that beat badly, and to be honest, that beat was pretty trash. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I tried to the the liaison, I, you know, who hooked me up with that gig. I told them like, hey, I have a bunch of other beats that I could do, or, and I have a bunch of other beats that's way better than this. They were like, mm, nah, they want to, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I owe it all to this place here, to you. Oh, thank you, man. Um, yeah, and then there were the sessions, and I was, like, meeting all of these. Talk a little the, bit about the Large Professor and oh, the, man. just a little stuff, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, Large Professor, who who actually gave me my name. He had given me my name, 88 Keys. Um, yeah, he was here. Uh, uh, Rashad Smith. Yes. Rashad Ringo Smith, shout out to him. You know, legendary producer himself. Hit after hit after hit after hit. And then Busta Rhymes. You know, um, I wound up becoming the assistant engineer for his first album, The Coming, his debut album. Um, you know, with uh, our sister Ricky St. Hilaire. Yes, yes. Um, that was a crazy experience. Oh, speaking of, uh, I shouldn't say speaking of crazy. However, you know, rest in peace, ODB. Yes. Old Dirty uh, did his album here as well. Yes. Oh man, there's so uh, many. I mean, so many. Uh, Dos Effects. Um, oh, and then I uh, met Bob Fujinski, who was yeah. Nixon on the Neve in the other room. Yeah, Eric Sermon. Did you Eric meet Sermon. Eric Sermon yep. when he was here? Yep. 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 Eric yep. Sermon. Uh, the list it just goes on and on and on. But were you here when Nas was here? No, but I. 
No, I wasn't here when he was here. However, I did speak to Biggie on the phone while I was here. Okay, okay. I spoke to, you know, the late, great Biggie Smalls, the notorious B.I.G. I spoke to him on the phone. Um, but it, so many memories. The ODB sessions were so insane. And I feel like I had to have... It had to have been like in the summer because I was literally here for I want to say five days straight, mm -hmm. um, working with him and his one of his younger brothers and his Buddha monk was the pro producer I believe. Yeah, I was here for five days straight. Straight, straight. Like didn't go home, didn't shower, um, and you know, uh, uh, delirious. Just like, cause I had to stay up and, oh man, so, oh I, I have the craziest story. Um, well, one of several, but with Busta Rhymes, um, I feel like I did ODB and then bust like during my stage of delirium from not sleeping. Mm -hmm. I think I had Buster, uh, bust a session with Buster like the following day or so, and. I wound up sleeping on the floor, uh, on my stomach. I, was, I fell asleep on the store on the floor in front of this board, and I woke up to a bunch of people just not cheering, but like it was like oh, ass, like they're cursing. It's like yo, this is crazy, this is crazy. And when I woke up, I had a sharpie in my in my it was in my left hand. I had a sharpie in my left hand. So, Ricky St. Hilaire was telling me, he's like, yo, I don't know what type of voodoo you're on, what, what, like, what you do. But, so Busta had thrown, like they were throwing stuff at me, I guess, to wake me up, but then, you know, it was like the gag. They were throwing stuff at me. And Busta had thrown a sharpie at me. And again, I was completely passed out, dead asleep, wow. on my stomach, but I caught it. <laughs> on some like, <laughs> On some, uh, you know, I don't even know, like Jackie Chan, like <laughs> everyone said that I caught it, and and I, I just remember waking up with the sharpie in my hand, like what? And then, yeah. So, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so 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 many so many fond memories here, and I I learned pre pretty much everything I know now about like producing and and studio etiquette. And you know, just you know, mixing and just like this is literally the board that intimidated me, and then I went, I grew to love. Um, yeah, this is like every everything about this, you know, that time and this place and you and it was just like it made me the person who I am today. Also made me the father who I am today, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I I owe it all to this place and to you. Thank you. Thank you so Absolutely. much, man. It's just such yeah. a pleasure, like, just reconnecting with you for a minute. Yeah. It's just like, I'm such a f fan of your work. Uh, tell uh, us a little bit about Diet Coke, man. I mean, you, oh, yeah. Duh. If you don't care to share, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Diet Coke. Uh, you mentioned that was an old beat you had in your library or something? Yeah, that. So I made that beat in 2004. Okay. And uh, the beat was actually just, um, it was an interlude. So back. Back in the day, I used to shop beats and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I, I no longer <clears throat> uh, pitch beats or anything like that. But, um, yeah, so I used to shop beats. And, um, you know, I was putting, the, like, my beat tapes, I started to have, I wanted to make them fun and I wanted to make them all thematic. Like, mm -hmm. and that was my way of trying to have, well, that was, it was it served my the purpose twofold. One, it was fun for me because I always imagine like, okay, if I'm putting an album together for somebody, like I'm gonna make this album, you know. And then two, you know, I felt like it would, it was uh, giving me kind of like an edge over other producers who were just like track number one, track number two. Mm -hmm. Oh, this beat is called very hot beat. This beat is called fire beat. It's like nah. It's like okay, you know. So all of my okay. stuff was was themed. So okay. at the time, I made a a, a beat tape. Uh, I called it the makings of crack cocaine. And uh, I had skits on it and everything. So that beat was the first interlude on the beat tape. And, uh, you know, that's why I was cutting um, Fat Joe, like, like crack, crack. 
And oddly enough, 18 years later, it goes, you know, it winds up on Pusha T's album, you know, the Mr. Correct dealer himself. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, so I made the beat uh, back then. I couldn't sell it if my life depended on it, which it did. Um, yeah, so I one day I found like a bunch of old tracks on my computer and um you know i was on the phone with uh yay who you know i met him in 99 uh, uh yeah like late 99 or so and uh we hit it off like we're we've been best friends like ever since um so on the phone with him and i had just found these beats and i was like yo i just found some old beats and i was like yo check this out so i played one for him and then i played the second and this was like the second beat that i played for played for him and he stops me he says send this to me immediately so i so i texted it to him and then a month later yeah about a month later uh you know he hits me up says he's in new york he's like yo um yo uh, you know come come to the studio which was his hotel room mm -hmm. go down to uh the last studio nothing like this um yeah and uh you know walk in it was like him, Pusha was there, his manager, one engineer, and one other person. And, uh, you know, just hanging out there. Um, and then, like, towards the end of the night, Ye asked if I had that beat. No, the, the couple of beats that I had sent to him. I was like, yeah, I have it on my phone, but, you know, you have it as well. So, you know, pulled it up, played it, and then Ye starts freestyling. The whole room, I mean, again, it's like five or six of us in the room. Everyone's going crazy. And, uh, you know, yeah, he's just freestyling. And then uh, Push is like, yo, I need that, I need that. And then that happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Just, just like that. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It, it wound up becoming a hit single. Um, and then I, it's funny because I tried to remake it because, I, you know, I was like, I did this 18 years ago. You know, the, I think you mentioned that to me. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, I put a lot of effort. It, it's funny because normally when I make beats, uh, I, I'll knock it. I'll do it in like 10, 15, like 15, 20 minutes. You time. make a whole beat that quickly. Yeah, like wow. for the most part. So that one, I, absol I absolutely did that in about in less than 15 minutes. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah, like chop. But then the crazy thing is like back then, my production style, it was... uh. I had this thing about not looping samples back then, uh, where you know me being a kid, I always felt like if a per if a producer looped a sample, that they're, they're lazy, mm -hmm. and and that actually both helped and hurt my it, it actually hurt my career for me to be stuck in that mindset because there have been there have been times when I just find like amazing loops and I'm like nah I have to do something with this because you know. And then I'll wind up like chopping it up and then it just wouldn't sound the same. Then I'll just leave it alone. Next thing you know, somebody comes along, loops that same part and like hit single. But um, yeah, so I say all that to say when I tried to remake the beat, it took me about three hours to figure out how I chopped it up because like, you know, what I used to do is so intricate. But uh -huh, uh -huh. I never realized how intricate it was because I was just having fun. It was just like doing it like without even thinking. Sure, sure. You know, um, which I'm actually getting back to, like, doing the chops to, like, you know, show people that it's not, it's, it's not as easy as it sounds or whatever. But, you know, right. just get, trying to get back to having fun with it. Sure, sure. Like that. but, yeah. that's, a, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Care to share anything about working with Ye at all? or? Oh, yeah. Um, Formerly known as Kanye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, anything, you know. I'm sure people would love to know a little bit of, like... Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, we uh, again we've been best friends since '99 and stuff. Um, you know, he he's my daughter's both of my daughter's godfather. Um, we're you know, you know we just we we went through a lot together and stuff. I've seen you know his his rise to the top. Um, you know, man, it's a. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot that I could say about him. Um, but, you know, let me see. One. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. Uh, Must have been uh, just exciting to work closely with him and being that his yeah. life is so. Wow. He's got so many things going on. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like when, when we work, 
it's not it's like we don't work. We just we're just hanging out. Oh, and cool. stuff like that. So, but here, here's something. Uh, um, so I taught him how to play a game called Mancala, mm -hmm. and it's like one of his favorite games and stuff. Um, and I don't know, like this absolutely isn't exciting now that I was like thought out what I was about to say, but. You know, we we once uh, played Mancala for four hours straight uh -huh. in his um, in his uh, room in his hotel, and then you know we went out to eat or whatever, and then we came.